Monterosa here. Still crazy after all these beers. And you know what? I'm here with Chef Rocky Fino. Hey, Rock, we got a couple little beers here. I got the Railbender Ale, and you've got number nine. nine. The Magic number Hat, nine number nine. From Magic Hat. And you are one phenomenal chef. Rocky Fino, you got this great book called Will Cook for Sex. Now, listen, I wanted you to cook for me. Does that mean I have to? Uh... You know, it is a two-way street, but uh, and I am from Southern California, so you know, you never know what happens in that kind of deal, but... I have kind of working from the guy's angle from a heterosexual standpoint, Gary. That I'm safe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is we get a couple of the women with us in the room and we do some cooking. The two of us do the cooking. The women do their part. You know how it is. And the cooking is in the uh, literal term or? In the kitchen. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Rock, I met you several years ago. You and I hit it off right away. I hope the hell we, 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 we work together at some point. We will. I think we will. Tell us about this book, We'll Cook for Sex. Well, I came up with the idea, like I said, because uh, when you're uh, short, losing your hair, balding, big nose Italian, you got to have another play out there. you got to be able to attract your lady in some other way. And I learned from my father a long time ago that cooking really impresses people. So, you know, if you do something nice for your lady and you do something, you know, you cook a nice meal, I found out it works. And I've been pushing it to guys all along. You know, just do something nice for your woman in the kitchen and she's going to reciprocate. And, you know, let's leave the joking of the title aside, but the title certainly attracts attention. I have a copy of this book, and I've, I've read the book, and it's a well, well-written book. Never leave the joke aside. That's always, if you can get her laughing, you've got a better chance with her anyway. Absolutely. Food is one thing, but if I get her smiling, I'm always in a better, in better shape. So, you know, cooking and food and beer and wine, it's all about having fun. You don't need to be serious about it. Have a good time with it. Do joke about it. Do play up the fun of it, and, and, and that's usually what leads to a great evening. Absolutely. And I got to tell you what, it's a great book, and you do so many appearances around the country. I try. I, I work my way through. This is one of my favorite. Atlantic City is a great one. The East Coast, meeting all my friends that I see here all the time. But I was in Denver a couple weeks ago doing a wine harvest party. I'm from Southern California. So I get around. I try to cover as many spots as I can and absolutely get the word out. And it's it's been... Uh, I mean, people say, why do you do it? I said, well, why else would I have a great excuse to travel, hit, hit up a bunch of food and wine expos, eat, drink, have a good time? I, that's what it's all about. Now, the curious thing is, as we've been here at the Atlantic City Food and Wine Show, we've seen so many people who have come back to you. They've taken a look at the book, maybe didn't know what the book was all about, but you know what? They saw your performance on stage, too, and they come back and say, hey, i got to check this book out. I get a lot of ladies that will be stopped about 10 feet away from the table, and they don't know what they're looking at. And I have to tell them, look, it's not porn, it's a cookbook. <laughs> Take a look. It's recipes. It's all about food. And as they lead in and they realize, oh, this is great, a cookbook that I tell my, you know, I tell them all the time, take it home, put it in the kitchen, say, honey, get in the kitchen. We'll see what happens. And that's the thing, you know, again, we're going to leave the jokes aside, but it's a well-written book, and it is, it's, it's a pretty serious-minded cookbook. Well, I, I did, the recipes work. I mean, I was really, we worked really hard at the idea of creating very simple recipes, step-by-step -step photography throughout, starting with raw ingredients, because if you want to know what to shop for, and then as you lead your way through it, you got steps you can follow along, and they're very simple, and it's going to work the first time, because there's nothing more discouraging than wanting to make a recipe you see in a book, a magazine, and then you get to the ingredients list and it's 27 items long, and by the halfway through it, you're like, there's no chance, I quit. And it's, it's discouraging, that's not the way to work it. I wanted to be encouraging guys to get in the kitchen, give it a try, and you're gonna succeed the first time. And you know what, as a beer guy, it's always heartening to see a chef who likes his beer. You, you, got, you can't be one dimensional. I see too many guys always, always about wine, and I'm like, wait a minute. I need a good cold beer all the time, and it's really fun to find great flavors in beer now. And there are now. You're right. It's not like, oh my goodness, when I grew up in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't that much in terms of options. Do you remember guys used to consider themselves, I'm a Bud guy, I'm a Coors guy, I'm a Miller guy. Those days are gone. Now it's like, I feel like a pale ale tonight. I feel like a stout. I'm eating this. I want to mix it up with something. I want to do something a little lighter. And it's now they realize that, you know... Different beers for different occasions, different beers for different days of the week. Do you ever do any cooking with beer? Absolutely. And a lot of different hearty beers on a chili. You know, you do, you know, and then uh, there are a lot of tricks to beer. I mean, beer sometimes is, uh, you got to know how to work with it because it does have a very overpowering flavor to take over sauces. But done right, um, <laughs> you know, I had the other night, I didn't cook it, but I, they had it at a restaurant, it was beer cheese soup. And I you got to be kidding me, right? And it literally was. It came out tasted very hearty beer, cheese, soup, and it was really good. I mean, it doesn't, it's simple, but the beer was there. You smell it in the soup, 
It added to the, to, the, to the flavors of the cheese. It was good. And I got to tell you, what gets me is when people say they're going to be cooking with, oh, I'm going to use a cheap beer, a cheap wine. Why would you cook with something that you wouldn't drink? Tell me what that's all about. Well, now, you don't want to be too crazy. I don't want to waste a good wine on, uh, you know, because you are cooking it down. But in the case of like a beer, if you, use a, if you use a Bud Light to cook, there's nothing left. There's no flavor there. You're not getting anything out of it. You got to use some beer that's got something that's going to add to the sauce, going to add to the flavor. And on wine, yeah, I mean, you got to use the right type of wine that's going to work with the sauce. You need sometimes, you know, a full bodied wine. So you do want to use good stuff. Unless you're making, I mean, sometimes, like I said, on a, if it's just adding a little wine to the, you don't want to, I, I'm not going to encourage somebody to waste a good $80 bottle of wine in a, in a pan saute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you do want to use, you know, the, Ingredients, ingredients, ingredients. You start with fresh ingredients, start with good ingredients, you're going to end with good results. And again, the book is called We'll Cook for Sex. Rocky Fino, where can we find the book? You have a website. Give us, give us all the information. Very simply put, willcookforsex.com. It's my site. I, 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 I follow everything that tracks through there. If you order through the willcookforsex.com, I personally sign the copy, send them out myself. You'll get them within a few days. And this is one of those deals where I'm telling the audience, again, I have the book. Actually, I have a couple things that you've done. They're great, and uh, it's so good to see you here in Lang City again. I look forward to doing anything with you, Gary. It's always a good time to, you know, I tell people all the time, I know the beer guy. <laughs> I mean, there's certain relationships in life you want, but I know the beer guy. One day we're going to do something together on stage. Sounds good. I don't know what it is, and yeah. we, may, we may get ourselves arrested for it, but we're going to do something. It'll be fun. Rocky Fino, thanks for joining us, brother. Cheers, Let's Gary. do that. Let's do a little shake of the hands. And we will see you next time on Still Crazy After All These Beers. How about you? You still crazy after your beers? I'm always crazy. All before right. and after the beers. We'll see you next time. I'm still crazy after all of these beers through the years. Winter, summer, springtime too. Crazy here, after all these beers, there is only one for me, and you know, you know that I'll always be crazy after all these beers.